Hey guys, how are you doing? I want to talk to you from the Never Enough headquarters about one of the most underrated sports performance products out there that won't cost the earth. And it's gone a little bit out of fashion recently, which is crazy. So it's creating monohydrate, probably one of the most researched supplements in the sports nutrition industry. Creating monohydrate, if you get the correct type, is amazing. It's incredible. So creatine increases ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is energy. So we've got more energy. With that comes more strength, more speed. It also suppresses something called lactic acid. Lactic acid is that burning sensation we get. If you're doing hill sprints, you'll get it in your legs. If you're doing high reps and volume training, you'll get it everywhere, whatever you're training. It's that burning of the muscles. It's that lactic acid. And if you can suppress that lactic acid, which with creatine monohydrate, you can, then you get more reps out. Getting more reps out with more power causes more muscle damage. More muscle damage increases your development, your speed, your strength, your muscularity, and your efficiency. There's lots of myths about creatine. So when creatine first came out, it was in this, it was called Phosphagen. Um, was one of the first creatines out there. And it was like a game changer for anyone that lifted weights, anyone that did any sport. It was like, what is this stuff? And it's legal, this is amazing. So a lot of companies got on the creatine bandwagon. And at the time, when it first came out, we didn't know what the long-term effects of creatine would be, positive or negative. Now we do. It's been around for 30 odd years. So creatine monohydrate, if you take it correctly and you're taking the right quality, then it is game changing. Creatine monohydrate ideally should be taken in a micronized form. So you can buy different grades of creatine. The cheapest grade of creatine, many of the big companies do because they sell so much of it. So normal creatine monohydrate is quite granular. It's quite big as a particle size and it's relatively cheap. So a lot of these big companies, because they sell 100 million tubs a year, will buy the lowest grade they can get because if they can save three pound a tub, that's 300 million pounds a year more profit in their bank accounts. It's very simple economics and it's a very simple business when they're not passionate about the, the product. They're not, they don't care about the customer, they're looking at monetary return, sales and actual margins. Never enough nutrition don't. Never enough nutrition look at the product, how well it works, the quality, the grade and the end user. My business model is if I give you something that's high quality at an affordable price, and when it works, you will come back and stay loyal to me as a customer. So I can do it ethically, morally, and still make a living out of it. Our creatine monohydrate is what they call 200 mesh. It's one of the highest pharmaceutical grade creatines you can get. So if you bought a, a, a high street brand or one of these big uh, kind of companies, I'll not mention names, and you compared it to ours, one would look like sugar granules, Ours looks like the finest flour you can get. That makes a difference, because ours is 200 times smaller as a particle size than the normal pedaled creatine monohydrate. Now the other thing creatine monohydrate does is it attracts fluid. Now if you've got this granularly cheap grade stuff that everyone seems to be peddling mass market wise, then that isn't even gonna get through the mesh in the gut wall. That's gonna sort of hang around the gut and it's gonna attract water, which causes Bloating. This is where the myth comes about creatine monohydrate makes you watery. Yes, if it's not getting into the cells in the muscle, it will. If you're getting it into the muscle tissue itself, into them cells, it's going to attract water retention, or the posh name, subcutaneous water, into the muscle. What that does is it volumizes that muscle from within. It will dry you out, so visibly you will look drier and leaner, but more volumized, the muscle looks harder and fuller. So creatine monohydrate, if it's micronized, like the Never Enough one, can make a massive difference. Give it four weeks to get into the system fully and saturate the muscle cells, 
And personally, I suggest you take it with like a juice or something with some carbohydrates in there to increase your insulin production, which will shuttle that creatine into the cells in the muscle themselves. Personally, I take it a couple of hours before training or a few hours after training. That's just a personal opinion on, on research that I've just been reading recently. I've been saying that for a long time and the guys and girls are getting results. Yes, ladies, if you're worried about creating monohydrate, of course you can take it. It's not hormonally affecting you on testosterone or anything like that. So you're getting tighter, you're getting fuller, you're getting more energy, you're getting less lactic acid production, you're getting more strength and more power. Why wouldn't you? Our creatine monohydrate, micronized creatine monohydrate, pharmaceutical grade, is one of the best on the market. We retail it for £24.95, and that is worth every penny. On the amount to take, I would suggest that for every kilogram you weigh, you take a gram of creatine. My apology, for every 10 kilograms you weigh, you take a gram of creatine. So if you're weighing in at 50 kilos, take five grams of creatine daily. There's your maintenance level. If you're weighing in at 100 kilos, like me, you're looking at 10 grams a day as a maintenance level. Personally, I would divide it. A couple hours before training, one scoop. A couple hours after training, one scoop. In a juice, ideally, or something with some sugars in. The other thing is we deal with world champion powerlifters. So, you know, Rob Denethi, Sam Salomi, these are world-class athletes. Marcus Shave, junior world champion. These guys, you know, they're 140, 150 kilos. These guys are massive. They all take a micronized creatine monohydrate, but they take it accordingly. So Rob, 150 kilos, takes 15 grams a day. Perfect for him as a maintenance. Other myths out there, oh, you've got to cycle it like five days on and two days off. No, no you don't. You've got to load it. You've got to do 20 grams a day for the first five days. You can do, and that will get into the body quicker, but you'll have exactly the same results if you just keep to that maintenance level. After four weeks, you should have exactly the same results. So I'd suggest, save your money, just go on that one gram of creatine for every 10 kilograms you weigh. Creatine will change the game for you. If you haven't taken it, but if you haven't taken the micronized creatine, give it a go. If you're one of these and said creatine doesn't work for me, you haven't taken the right creatine, trust me. A little bit on creatine monohydrate. Hope that helped you. Hope it informed you. Have a great day, guys. Get yourself some creatine. Bye-bye.